Shalom friends, Robert Gotzlik here from the Friends of Israel Gospel Ministry. The last time we got together, we were looking at Zechariah chapter 11, and there we saw that Zechariah was acting out, was playing this role of a shepherd. If you haven't watched that video, that sermon bite video, I'd encourage your friends to go back and watch it. We had a great study. But there we saw that Zechariah, he's acting out and playing this role of a shepherd here. And we see how the people not only rejected Zechariah, as we read about in Matthew chapter 23, where we eventually are told the fate of what happened to Zechariah, that he was slain between the temple and the altar. But we see how this foreshadowed exactly what would happen to the Messiah, to Israel's Messiah, the good shepherd, to Jesus, that he would be weighed out these 30 pieces of silver, that uh, the, the price of a common slave. And so as we see that the people not only rejected Zechariah, they rejected 500 years later, they would reject their own Messiah, Jesus, their good shepherd. And uh, Zechariah, you know, he had these two staffs in his hand, he, you know, as a shepherd would, one for, for uh, def defending the flock and another one to, to bring unity to the flock, to keep them together. And so these two staffs, Zechariah broke. And the staffs were named Beauty and Bands. And of course, the, the staff of beauty that he broke first uh, was, was symbolic of God's mercy and grace upon his people, his protective hand on his people. And of course, the staff of bands uh, was that unity of the people. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, because of the rejection of their good shepherd, the rejection of their Messiah, we saw that, you know, symbolically as Zechariah broke these staffs, that is exactly what happened to the people in 70 AD. When the Romans under General Titus came in and destroyed that second temple and burned it to the ground and killed many Jewish people. And there we see the start of the dispersion of the Jewish people to the four corners of the earth. Amazing, friends. Sad, but amazing portions of scripture here. And now when we come to the remaining verses in chapter 11, we're going to see that there's now a foolish shepherd that's introduced. And we're going to talk about him today. And so like always, if you have your Bibles handy, you're going to want to grab uh, them today and, and turn with me to Zechariah chapter 11. I'm going to begin by reading um, verse 15. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd, for lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those uh, that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that is broken, nor feed that uh, that standeth still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. Whoa, this doesn't sound like a good shepherd, does it? Sounds everything opposite that a good shepherd would be. That's exactly the point that Zechariah uh, is making here. This is the point that the Lord wants uh, us to see, wants the Jewish people to see here as well. Because there's coming a time when there's a foolish shepherd that's going to take the stage on planet Earth here. Of course, as Bible students, we know that that person's name, we refer to him as Antichrist. Uh, John is the only one that refers to him as Antichrist uh, in First and Second John here. But he has many other names, the Antichrist, this foolish shepherd. He's known as a fierce king. Uh, he's also known as the beast in Revelation 13. He's known as the man of sin in 2 Thessalonians. Uh, he's also known as the wicked one, again, in 2 Thessalonians. He's known as, like Antiochus, he's known as the little horn. And so he has many names. But this foolish shepherd here, when you look at Isaiah chapter 28, they, the house of Israel, they make a covenant, it says in Isaiah 28, with death. They make a covenant with hell because it's exactly where the foolish shepherd gets his power from. He gets his powers right from the pits of hell, from Satan himself. We read about that in Revelation 13. But let's talk about the identity of this man a little further, this foolish shepherd here. Uh, you look at uh, Isaiah chapter 14. If you have your Bibles, just turn really quick there. Isaiah 14 here, speaking of Lucifer, speaking of Satan, this is his heart. This is what Satan wants here. He says, it says, How art thou fallen, O heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, here's his heart, friends. Here's Satan's heart here. It says, he, Satan says, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. That's on the temple mount speaking. That's in the temple that's coming. That's in the tribulation temple. That's the temple that they're preparing to build today. This is where Satan is going to be. This is where the Antichrist is going to be. And we'll, we'll talk about that here in a moment here. But he's going to sit on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And what does God say? 
God says, yet, yet thou shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. We know what Satan, what what his ultimate fate is. It's going to be in the lake of fire, but he's going to go down and he's going to take as many people with him as he can. And when we go to Revelation 13, we see that Satan um, possesses this, this man that's coming on the scene here. Uh, what we know is the Antichrist, this foolish shepherd, he possesses him. And uh, you have to understand that Satan hates the Jewish people. Satan hates the Christians. Satan hates everybody that's made in the likeness and image of God. He hates us. And if Satan can prove God to be a liar, then Satan won't be judged. And that's the whole crux of the matter. And you see, when you come to Revelation, it says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for Satan comes down with great wrath, knowing that he has a short time. And he goes to make war with the remnant of, of, of God's people, the Jewish people. Of course, when we come, eventually come to Zechariah 13, we're going to see, as I mentioned before, that Zechariah says that two-thirds of the Jewish people are going to perish, and one-third he'll bring through the fire. Well, friends, this foolish shepherd, as we read about in Zechariah here, it says he hasn't come to feed them. No, it says that he's, God says he's going to raise this shepherd up. He's going to raise this shepherd up. And he, you know, and I think of just for a moment here, I should, I should really read John chapter 5 here. Because Jesus says here in verse 43, he says, I am come in my Father's name. This is Jesus speaking here. He says, I have come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. And that's speaking of this, this, this foolish shepherd that Zachariah is talking about. This foolish shepherd here. And he and says here, and he says in, in verse 16, is not going to visit those uh, that be cut off, neither will he seek the young. No, he's not going to heal that is broken. He's not going to heal anybody. He's not going to have compassion on anybody. He's not going to feed anybody. He's going to try to kill as many Jewish people. And, and for all that matter, he's going to try and kill as many people as he can, period, on planet Earth. And that's going to happen in the 70th week of Daniel. That's going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble, that seven-year tribulation period. And look, if you will, at Daniel chapter 9. Because here it's talking about these 70 weeks, these 70 years here. Um, which the angel Gabriel tells Daniel, it's upon thy people, it's upon thy holy city, Daniel. That's that's speaking of to the Jewish people and to the holy city, Jerusalem. And in, you know, these 69 weeks of years have already come to pass. We don't have time to talk about that now. Um, you can see some of that in some of the other videos I did mention about that. But in verse 27 in particular, this is the 70th week and that has not happened yet. Okay, and look what it says. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's a week of year. That's seven years. So this foolish shepherd's coming on the world scene and he's going to institute this and confirm this peace treaty with the house of Israel for seven years. You know, as we all just witnessed um, Donald Trump and the, the deal of the century uh, being unveiled here, um, you know, and as good as it sounds for, for the Jewish people, there's still some concessions. There's still a division of, 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 some, of the land here, still promising a two-state solution. And, of course, the Palestinians, uh, especially the leadership, has, has rejected it without even seeing it. They've rejected it. And it's just another attempt, another attempt. And we've seen them already in the past. We've seen it in the present here. And it's going to come in the future where there's going to be another attempt for a peace treaty. And it's going to come by this foolish shepherd. And this one will be confirmed. This one is going to come into effect for seven years. And in the middle of it, in the middle of it, Daniel here in chapter 9, verse 27, says that the Antichrist is going to break that covenant in the middle. And he's going to cause the, the sacrifice to cease. Well, when you look in the book of Revelation, we see here what happens. We see in the 13th chapter that that's exactly what the Antichrist does. He goes into the temple and the false prophet raises up this statue and, and the, the great wondrous things happen. This statue looks like it's being, that it's alive and all worship this, the beast. And so in the middle of the tribulation period, he's going to cause the sacrifice to cease. And that's the abomination of desolations that Jesus talked about in the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24. And what does Jesus say in Matthew 24? He, that's how much Jesus loves the Jewish people. He says, when you see that abomination spoken by the prophet Daniel, run, flee. Don't, don't go in to get your belongings. Run. Why? Because Satan, as I mentioned in Revelation 12, has come down having great wrath. And he's going to make war on the remnant of God's people, on the Jewish people. And he's going to try to wipe them out. Because if he can, then God's a liar and his word can't come, full, uh, can't come to pass. And then Satan can't be judged 
Friends, you got to understand that that's the whole crux of the matter. And so here we see this man, you know, this 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 man of lawlessness here. If you go to Second uh, Thessalonians here, chapter two here, Paul even talks uh, about that as well here. And it says here in verse four, speaking of this antichrist, this foolish shepherd, he says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or all that is worshipped so that he as God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. You know, and we know exactly what happens here. We know that Satan isn't going to win. We know that Antichrist isn't going to win. We know that that Antichrist, uh, the, 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 the beast, the false prophet and Satan, they're all cast into the lake of fire. But not without cre- causing and creating a lot of havoc, friends. That's all because... Uh, and, and, and you know what what happens to Israel, what happens to the Jewish people uh, in the time of Jacob's trouble is a result of the rejection of the of their good shepherd. And they're going to embrace this foolish shepherd. I don't know about you, that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. And so we need to show compassion to our Jewish friends. We need to share with them when, when God gives us opportunity to share with them. Because there's coming a time on this world scene that's going to be horrific. Not only for the Jewish people, but for the whole world. Because when you read about this foolish shepherd and what he's going to try to do, you know, uh, we see that it, uh, there's going to be a mark implemented and, and no man can buy, sell, or trade without bearing this mark. And he's going to deceive many people. He's going to deceive many people. But, you know, when, uh, but we, as I mentioned, we know who wins in the end here. I'm just going to turn back to Zechariah really quick here. I'm going to turn back to Zechariah. And uh, we know who wins because God will destroy um, God will destroy the Antichrist. God's going to destroy Satan. Um, you know, he's going to be locked into the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And then after that, he's going to be wiped out. Uh, and then we don't have time to get into that. But uh, he'll be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. But look at verse 17. It says, Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword uh, shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. So he's going to he's going to uh, in, get inflicted with a with a deadly wound here. Uh, and there again, you can read about that in Revelation 13. And so, you know, he's going to deceive the world, friends, this foolish shepherd. Oh, you know, I think of again, I think of uh, Jesus words here in, in Matthew 23. And I'll read them for you here. It's, he says, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicks, chicks under her wings, and you would not. Wow. That's the heart of Jesus. How much he loves the Jewish people. He wants to be their shepherd. He wants to be your shepherd, friends. The question is, will you let him? Well, friends, that's all the time we have. Uh, The next time we get together, we're going to be looking at Zechariah chapter 12, where Jerusalem is going to be a cup of trembling. Uh, What we see exactly happening in our world today, and you won't want to miss that. And so until until next time, friends, shalom. Thanks.